give us a round of applause. Let's come. Let's come. Let's come. Salvation, when the, you need a triumph God. You know, triumph God means he's a trinity God, three, three in by one. So he's a three person, all in agreement, want to bless us. Hallelujah. Amen. So in our Christian life, to live a Christian life and worthy of our calling, we need every promise of God. We need everything what is the, the Bible is giving us so we can live out like, our Christian life properly, according to our calling. If we don't grab in every blessing, so our Christian life we can't live it out. It's not going to be full. You see, our Christian, in order to be full, uh, so we need to grab every blessing, every promises of God in the Scripture we have for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So in this case, we need all the triumph, grace, not only the grace of Jesus Christ. We need that all the triumph grace. Because we need the stream of grace is coming from Jesus. We need the stream of grace coming from the Father. We need the stream of grace coming from the Holy Spirit. Even though it is one God, but it's a different forms of grace. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the scripture says. You have received grace upon what? Grace. Hallelujah. Amen. So we receive grace upon grace. You can receive grace from Jesus. You can receive grace from the Father. You can receive grace from the Holy Spirit. So a stream of grace we need. Like for instance, I'm just because I'm gonna go through in, in, in a little bit detail. Uh, for instance, from Jesus, 
get the stream of grace from him because the, the Bible telling us he is interceding for us now right now. You need that intercession to flow through you. Amen. 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 To flow through you. It's not only your prayer is sustaining you, sustaining us. Not only our prayer meeting or our prayer life is sustaining us. Because right now Jesus is interceding for you on our behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We need that grace to flow into our life. Uh, like for instance, if we say the grace of the Holy Spirit is it is a power to sustain us, it's a power to sanctify us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We need that sanctifying power in our life. We need that sustaining of grace in our life from the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be sanctified. It cannot be holy without the Holy Spirit, without His presence, without His presence cleansing us in and out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit, when it's touching us, when the Holy Spirit, we allow it, that grace to flow through in our soul, in our very being, is sanctifying, sanctifying. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we need that the love of God, that grace to, to fall in our life. That is a sustaining also. It is but different sustaining because it's different from what the Holy Spirit is doing. But the Father's love is different also to sustain us. So when we speak to the Father, you know, sometimes uh, we are the, the children of God. We are the children of God. When we speak to the Father, we speak in a word, isn't it? When we speak naturally, you speak in a word. But the only difference from our earthly Father, which means our earthly Father, He doesn't require us praise to speak to Him. You just speak and just speak anything you like. You can, you know. Whether you believe on it or not, doesn't matter. We can speak to our earthly father. But when you speak into our heavenly father, his every word you need to communicate with faith. That is becomes a natural. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How that will happen is it through his grace. Hallelujah. So okay, it's just a faith. You can talk to faith. Is there anything you believe it will happen to you? It will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is a faith language will be released through this grace. To speak to the Father. So when Jesus, when he, he was ministering, he just speak a word, then things happen. Amen? Amen. Because that is a word of faith. You know, that is the heavenly language to speak with with Jesus. Uh, just before I try to break this thing, I have to point out something. It's very important. And uh, that is prayer and blessing are two different things. Not, they're not the same thing. They're two different things. Yes, of course, through prayer you can be blessed, but that is a different issue. But this is two different things. So with this one, uh, particularly this scripture, it says, may the, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is a blessing. It's not a prayer. It's a blessing. Because Paul uh, speaks so many things to the Corinthians, we know that. Uh, they, they, they have fornication, they have division, they have all, you can condemn it, all kinds of sins. They have idolatry, love of money, all the uh, enemy each other, you know, they have a division. So there's so many things. He rebukes them, he taught them, he says what, whatever he can. But to leave them at the end, he has to do something with an apostolic authority, that is to bless them. To bless them, not to pray for them, but to bless them. Hallelujah. Amen. Because somebody we can pray for someone, he can bless someone. This is two different things. You see, if somebody is blessing you, something is happening right now, isn't it? There's some impactation. There's something will happen to you. But somebody prays for you, it will happen. Of course, gradually it will happen, but it won't happen automatically. It is two different things. So these are the things that have been given to. The church, especially when you read in uh, Old Testament, has been given to uh, Moses and Aaron. It's been, they've been commanded to raise their hand and bless these people. After they have been sacrificed, after they done everything they can, after they repented, after they done all things, so that the, the high priest has to stood and bless the people. You see, that is the office of the that's the high priest. So this one has been given in the Old Testament to, to, uh, to the fivefold ministry. We know that again, okay, all the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelists, they, they have been given to bless people. This is an authority, they can bless people. But what does that mean is, when this, sometimes because I, I like this, this, this church, we do it uh, in this church, but in uh, some Pentecostal church, probably they don't even mention it. This is good. 
But when we do it, we need to do it the right way. Amen? We need to do it the right way. And it's, 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 it's something to do is good, but doing it the right way will have that benefit which has been given to here. So, in the Corinthians, after he so many things he said to them, after so many things he explained, said everything, and then he left them with this blessing. He left them with this blessing. That's why we do it at the end of this, the service. That blessing will work in our life. But we need to do it earnestly and we need to do it by faith. The person who do it they has to have faith in it and also the person, the person who is receiving has to have faith in it. Yes, I am blessed today. Because God, that's why in the Old Testament that God blesses them the ones after they done, after they finish their prayer, after they finish their sacrifices, everything else, and this blessing is still will wait, wait for them. So God is ordaining these things He gave to the, the, His people so they might be blessed. Blessed in and out. Blessed means be successful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Whatever you plan, you pray, you might say prayer in this place. And then the, uh, uh, with the authority, you've been blessed to get your, to grant you your prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That is even in the, in the New Testament. It's given to the people to bless people. To bless people. This is an authority. This is an office gift given to, uh, to bless people. So there is a blessing in this place. So a true blessing would flow through this scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. If we act on it and believe on it, yes. Sometimes you just, I didn't hear my uh, prayer being answered, but I know I have been blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. You can get your blessing and you can go out and be successful. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is God ordained for us a blessing. If you notice here, when we talk about the Trinity, we usually, and if you go to in Matthew, we start from with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But over here, you can see it start with Jesus and goes to the Father and goes to the Holy Spirit. This is not accidental things, but this is very much that of how grace operates. Amen? Amen? Because unless you have the grace of Jesus Christ, your relationship with the Father is meaningless. Unless you have the grace of Jesus Christ in your life, your relationship with the Holy Spirit is meaningless. Because you can't have access, you can't have to the Father. You need to access it, you need what? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it comes first. You need to understand. That's it. The one start from the Father. It will start from Jesus. So the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. So you can have all access to the triumph God. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you if you see it in other places, uh, like for, uh, for instance in First Corinthians chapter twelve. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. Yeah, thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Sorry, did I say chapter 12? Sorry. Chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Yeah. Uh, speaks now there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are difference in administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversity of oppression, but it is the same God which works all in all. So on this one, you, you can find that it's the Holy Spirit mentioned first, then Lord, and then the Father is last. So the order is again changed. So if you read in, uh, uh, in Matthew, you find the Father has come first. So if you read in uh, 2 Corinthians about the grace, the Lord Jesus will come first. If you talk about the gift of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit to, to, to operate, the Holy Spirit comes what? Who comes first? But according to this verse, we we'll start from four, the Holy Spirit comes first. So this is just to show you, it's not an hierarchy in God's Trinity. It's not about hierarchy, but there is equality. Because we know sometimes we say Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but we think that the Father is not higher than the Son, and that is because we put that mentality in our in our mind. But that is not how God operates. Uh, is the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, but in equality. Amen. 
Amen. That is just to show they go from, from these uh, uh, scriptures. They can come, anyone can come first. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we talk about grace, that is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ comes first. Uh, without the Holy Spirit, without the grace of Jesus Christ, so our relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit is meaningless. So we we define grace. What is grace? Grace is unmerited what? Favor. Unmerited favor of God. So today I will be focusing on the grace of Jesus Christ. The grace of Jesus Christ. The, the scripture says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll be talking about the grace of Jesus today. So I'll be focusing on those areas. When the scripture says, May the grace of what? Lord. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the first one word is word Lord. When it says Lord, to show you He's omnipotent. Hallelujah. Amen. As to show you He's the Lord of in heaven, the Lord in hell, the Lord now in our life, in this world. Amen. Amen. He is the Lord so all entire universe. Even He is the Lord, the coming King. Hallelujah. He is the coming King. He's going to be the Lord. He's going to be the Lord of Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will but confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. He is the Lord of all. Need to remember that's why it is the grace of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Most High. There's nothing compared with Him. Sometimes we compare with Jesus with Satan. No, we, got, we, we cannot compare Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, He has an omnipotent power. The grace of the Lord. Who? Jesus. Jesus, He is, he is the Savior. He is the Messiah. He become one of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He become a human. And the scripture says, the cross. Christ is, what is that? The Christ means the anointed one. So I put it together. He is the omnipotent power who dies for you. He is anointed to heal, to deliver, to set us free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let this grace be with you. That's what it is. That is the title that is given us to us is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, sometimes when you talk about grace, people think about, they don't see it as an omnipotent power. Grace is just just something, I, I don't know how I'm going to put it in a word. They don't see it as an important, they don't see it, there is power in, in it. That is, the, that is the problem. But the, when you talk about grace, has, it has the, the grace of the Lord. When you talk about the Lord, is He is the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And He is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He is the one who is really saving us, delivering us, set us free. He is the one allowing us to come into God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Through His own sacrifice. Because He self-sacrificed for us. So let His grace be with you. The anointed one. He is the governor of the whole world. He is the leader. There's nothing compared with him, his power, his majesty, what he can do, what he can enable us. Hallelujah. Amen. So that what it is the Lord Jesus Christ. The stream of uh, his grace to be in our life. His, uh, how are we going to put it uh, in different words? Uh, because without the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the scripture telling us we are nothing. We are nothing. Because the scripture is telling us we are saved by what? Grace. So we continue our Christian work by what? Grace. We're going to finish, conclude our uh, salvation is by what? Grace. When Jesus Christ comes, appear in heaven, what we're going to receive? Grace. You see, without grace, there is nothing will, will be done in our a whole entire Christian walk. So what is, the, what is uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? What is that grace means? Uh, when the scripture says grace uh, is unmerited favor, sometimes we do it as a neutral person. Neutral person means give you some example. 
If someone, you have a class, you give a test to, to the class room, and you mark that uh, results by the people they get. When you mark, after you mark, you decide there are some people to get set for instance, they get 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10, and some people may be fine. Or some people uh, refuse to do the exam. So, but you decide to give them equal 10, 10, 10, 10 mark. And the people who fail still they have 10, 10 out of 10. The people who get 10 out of 10 still they have 10 out of 10. So the, the people who have been failed, what they get? Unmerited favor, isn't it? Because they've been passed. But the people who have got 10 out of 10, what do they say? They don't see any grace. <laughs> they just say, I earn it because I just, I just make it. 10 out of 10, I don't need anything to give me, he gave me an extra. Uh, th this is not what, how, what grace is. This is not what grace is. Grace is, you give a test, somebody, and instead of doing the, the test, instead of coming, he refuses you. He doesn't want to do any test. He doesn't want to know, he doesn't want to know, know you even. He goes away, but you call him, and still you give him 10 out of 10. That is grace. Amen. 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 So the, good that, life. The, so that, that is grace. That's what, what happened with Jesus. Because the people rebellious. The people they didn't accept him. The, the, the people rejected him. The people accused him. The people uh, put him into prison. The people put him onto the cross. They nailed him. They nailed him. They killed him. They don't want to know him. They just want to him to cease, to be banished. But he said, Father, they don't know what they are doing. Amen? Amen. That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, but how it works in your life. Because the scripture is telling us, while we are enemy with him, so Jesus Christ came and died for us, for our sinners. Amen? Amen. While we were a sinner, while we are in enmity with God, while we are still fighting with God, but Jesus put himself in our place. Amen. That is the Lord, uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he, he done it. He's not doing it because you love him. He's not doing it because you are a good person. He's not doing it because you're coming every day to the church, you tithe it properly. No. Because you know, so you, even since we start this service, if you, what, how many thoughts in your mind is going on, you have you can find yourself, you have so many things Amen. going on. Hallelujah, this place. <laughs> you see? But the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is still calling you back to Him. Still He is saying you are worthy to hear His word. Amen? Amen. Still calling you back. That is grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. How he that? When Jesus, when He was on earth, when He was on earth, Jesus was a friend of sinners and what? Republican, isn't it? So he associated himself with the sinners. Chief sinners. He was eating with the sinners. He was visiting sinners. He, he associated himself. Because why he does all of these things? It is his grace. Amen? Because of his grace. It's not because of, we, we judge, we don't want to associate with the sinners. But Jesus, he gives access, he gives access to the sinners himself. Amen. You know, Nicodemus, he is a Pharisee, but he associated himself with him. Amen? Amen? He answered his question. With that adulterous woman, she, she, she is adultery, but she came to him and she put all the perfume upon, on him and she was uh, uh, cleaning his feet with her own hair. She does all these things, but the Pharisees, but the others, they say, how come if he is a prophet, how come he allowed this woman to touch him? But it is through his grace. Amen? Amen. Through his grace, he allowed that woman to enjoy freedom. Amen. To know him. He is that by the grace of the Lord Jesus means. Uh, means still, because the scripture telling us he is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The key is grace is the same. Jesus is the same today. He is a friend of the, the sinners still. Amen? Amen. As still he is while we are enemy with him, still he is friend with us. 
because we are we say sometimes how we come with rebellion because we don't we don't hear his words we don't pray we all to pray uh, we we don't want to do anything what God is telling us we we come we find ourselves in contrary doing all our flesh things or other things but still the grace of Jesus Jesus is with us through his grace amen amen that what called the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ otherwise we will be the same with the other people we don't have any any anything to show because uh, we are sinners okay that we, if there is not the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ you can't be in a church because we are not indifferent with any other people you know Moses speak when you pray he said uh, because we, we are not any different from other people unless your presence go before us unless there is the presence of God he recognized that he is not indifferent from other people you know in, in the New Testament unless the grace of God operate in our life we are not any different from other people the, the only thing that's going to make us a difference is whether you are in the grace of God or not so once you are in the grace of God that makes different Amen? Amen. Without the, the, the grace of God, there's nothing will happen. You know, when this, uh, when Jesus was on crucified on the cross, while uh, he was on the cross, there was two people with him, isn't it? So one, one person was asking him for forgiveness, isn't it? And what Jesus promised for him? Today, you will be in paradise with me. That is grace. Amen? Amen? That is grace. That is a good grace. Sometimes, you know, with the name of Jesus, people say so many things about Jesus, but if you have a fear of Him, and you accept in your life, it makes a huge difference. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? It's not what other people think or what other people say. It's as other people, they say, if He is really true Lord, let Him save Himself. Let Him do Himself. You know, they just protesting against Him. But this man, he acknowledged who Jesus is, and he he, pro he gave that promise to be in paradise with him on the same day. Hallelujah! Amen. The same day to be in paradise. That makes huge difference. Sometimes when we think our Christianity, we just say looks like people making on it, or just our friend would make on it, just everyone. But looks like nothing is working. But the grace of Jesus is there. Hallelujah! To work Amen. to make huge difference in our life. Because the, between these two people and the people surrounding on that area, what makes a difference is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, don't worry, you will be with me in paradise today. You know, without the grace of uh, Jesus, the apostles and the disciples, they were, not, they were nothing. They were nothing. Now, what this means in other words, uh, they are not being indifferent from many other people because they have been denying. Peter was denying it many times, isn't it? Even told him three times he's been denied. They were terrified. They were clear. They were in, in the door. They locked the door. And they were terrified. The other people. They are not really thinking the resurrection. They are not thinking what Jesus has spoken to them. They've been terrified because they want to save themselves. That's what they were doing. You know, that's what they were doing. But because of His grace, He didn't count their fear, what, their circumstance, their situation. But we have been seeing when Mary just told them, "Hey." Go tell to the apostle, I'm going to meet them. And, and God, let them be there. You go and you tell them, I'm going to meet them. I'm going to come to them. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you are in that situation, you, because you be through your circumstance, uh, through your, uh, your passing in, in different ways, you know, and you're terrified. You might be in the state of denial. You might be like how the apostles have been doing it. But it's still the grace of Jesus, through His grace, He will come to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To call you back. To call you out. To say, yes, come. Yes, come. You are a holy person. Yes, come. You are my son. Yes, you come. That's what the, the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ means. And so with these uh, people, when you see them, all of them are deserved of sinners, a Republican tax collectors. But because of His grace, He's been accessible to them. He'll be able to change their life. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the, the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ comes into your life, changes you forever. Amen. Changes you forever. It doesn't matter who you are. 
As long as you allow the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to operate in your life, you're not going to be the same. Amen? Amen. Doesn't matter what the past, but what matters now, you, you're working with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the friend of the sinner. He came and he changed. He changed Peter. He changed all the apostles. Uh, he, he, he changed uh, uh, so many people. He touched everyone who comes to him or access to him. He will be, he'll be changed. Amen? He never could guard himself from by the bodyguard. Even the, the children could come to be able to come to him. Amen? Amen. You know that short man? I don't know about what's his name. The short man. The Kios. I mean, he was desiring. He was a tax collector. He was really desiring to see Jesus. He was like, uh, even on the tree. But Jesus, what, what did he say, told him? He didn't say, you know, I'm going to touch you. I'm going to come. No, no. He said, he just said, I'm going to be tonight in your place. I'm going to fish in your place. I'm going to, you can hang on me. You can talk to me. You can, you can experience me. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That was the grace of God. Without the grace of the, the Lord, you can't see the Lord. Amen. Amen. You need to acknowledge. You say that, yes, I'm going to be with you. You're going to experience me. You're going to know me. You can have anything you like. You know, it's not going to be I'm going to give you, uh, you know, half an hour someone, but you can have the whole night. I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that is the grace. You know, in, in, the, in the Old Testament time, the, no one will be uh, want to associate or touch the lepers. No, nobody, according to the law, nobody wants to touch the lepers because you become what? Unclean, isn't it? What Jesus does through his grace, when you be called, he just go and what? Touch him. Hallelujah. Amen? It's that the person becomes clean. The, person, the person's uh, uh, skin becomes like a baby. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's just let him go show to the, go show to some these religious people. They, 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 they can see it. Hallelujah. They can testify. Amen. Amen. That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, Jesus is, has give you full access of him. If you desire of him, if you want to know him, if you want to have fellowship with him, he will come to our heart. That's why the scripture says, Jesus will knock our doors. Whoever opens the door for him, he will come and what he will do? He will dine. He will feast with you. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, that will make it a lot easier for you to have to know the Father. So that will make it a lot easier to have that communion with the Holy Spirit. That is to, to go to further the next grace. You see, the first grace is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not going to stop here. Then you can move from that to the love of grace, amen, to the Father's grace. Then once you know that the love of God in your life, when you begin to experience, begin to flow out of love, then you begin to have a communion with the Holy Spirit. What is communion means, uh, just to put it in simple word, it is, it is good to know that the Holy Spirit is His omnipotent power, He is God, all these things to declare, but it is something different for you to know personal experience and personal work with the Holy Spirit. That is totally different things. Amen? Amen. But that what the grace of the Holy Spirit will do to you. Uh, but to, to, to tonight, I'll just still be focusing on the... On what? Grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does the, the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is... Uh, Number one is it just keep you from falling. Keep us from falling. falling. Uh, so I don't have time to go through the scripture, but it just keeps you from uh, from falling. Uh, in other words, uh, Jesus himself he spoke, "If anyone comes to me, I will, what will I, what did he say? Can you finish it? If anyone comes to me." <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I'll put it in a, in a different word. No one can take it away. Amen? Nothing will take you away from Him. Because He will sustain you through His grace. Amen? Nothing will take you away. That's what Paul he understood His grace and He says in uh, Romans uh, chapter 8 on the last verses. Who shall we separate you from? The, the love of God. Whether death, suffering, or what is a persecution, uh, whatever things cannot separate me from the love of 
God. Because nothing will be able to separate you from because of his grace. So his grace will keep you from what? From falling. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, he protects you. He protects you all the time. Uh, so, so sometimes if our uh, spiritual eyes open, it's not because we live in the, uh, where we are. Really, then Satan, the object of Satan is his people. Do you know that? Because he couldn't get to Jesus, but he can get to what? Uh, to you. Yeah, he can, he can get to you. He can get, come to me. So he always in the business of attacking uh, God's people. What protect us day and the night is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the scripture says. God uh, resists the power, but he will give, give what? Grace for the humble. And the enemy is like roaring lion. He's always looking at the, uh, uh, yeah, God, uh, just looking always to, to devour us, to destroy us, to destroy our things, to destroy the church, to destroy our ministry, to destroy our marriage, to destroy everything, whatever he can touch. But the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is protecting us always. Amen? Amen. What protects you? Protects you is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a couple of things I will be speaking. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ also what he does is uh, uphold us. It's going to uphold us. So no matter what we're passing through, the grace of Jesus Christ will uphold you. Amen? Amen. Without the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can sing. Because the scripture says, you will walk on the water, you will not sing. Amen? Amen. You go through the fire, you will not be touched. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is upholding us. It doesn't matter what life circumstance, where we are in our lives. All of us will be held by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That is the grace what we do. Uh, there are so many, uh, the, uh, within the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, grace, there is so many grace, so many grace to, to mention. A couple of them, for instance, there is the grace of suffering. Do you know that? There is the grace of suffering. If you get that grace, uh, yeah, you're going to pass through suffering for his name. Hallelujah. Amen. 